Hey guys, those are Peaky Vacations. Welcome to my review of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite comedies. D without a doubt, definitely one of one of my favorite comedies of all time. Uh, probably, definitely, definitely in my top 20. It's my favorite Steve Martin flick, as well as my favorite John Candy film. Big fan of this movie. And I reviewed it before, but I wanted to do it, another review again. Uh, because I actually got the opportunity to see the film in the theater. It was a really great experience to be able to see this wonderful, awesome, classic comedy in the theater. It was some of the the most fun I've had uh, watching a movie in the theater since I saw the screening of Ghostbusters, which I also was able to see this year. Um, it was still as hilarious as ever. Uh, I busted a gut. Uh, I, it was. I haven't laughed at as hard as I did and while watching this movie in the theater in ages it was really a lot really a fun experience it was also a nice bonding experience of my stepfather um, and uh, it was really really a nice uh, it, a really nice time actually it was really really cool and so uh, I just thought why not talk about the movie some more uh, the film is a 1987 movie it's uh, written produced and directed by John Hughes uh, it stars Steve Martin and John Candy uh, at the prime of their careers. Uh, just excellent pair in this movie. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better casting of you know these characters, Neil Page and Del Griffith. Um, very endearing to a very endearing, heartwarming film. It's not only a movie that makes you laugh and tickles your funny bone, but it also warms your heart. And I think that's something that, and especially in the comedy genre, is really lacking in, in movies nowadays. And um, just such an amazing movie. I mean, I, I, I can't say enough about the film. I mean, Roger Ebert really loved it, too. He found it to be one of his all-time favorite films. Um, anyway, Steve Martin plays Neil Page. John Candy plays Del Griffith. Layla Robbins plays Susan Page. Um... Uh, Michael McKean plays a state trooper in a cameo. Kevin Bacon plays a taxi racer uh, in a short cameo. Dylan Baker plays Owen. Uh, Olivia Burnett plays Marty Page. Uh, Larry Hart Hankin plays as Doobie. Uh, Richard Hurd as Walt. Uh, Matthew Lawrence plays Neil Page Jr. Eddie McClurg plays the St. Louis car, re car rental agent. She was also in uh, Ferris, Bueller's Day, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, Bill Irwin plays a man on the plane. Ben Stein was also on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He plays a Wakita Airport representative. Lyman Ward is uncredited, who was also on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, as uh, Th Ferris's dad is in this as John, a character named John. Um, the movie was greeted with critical acclaim upon its release. Uh, revelation that Hughes, because it, it, Hughes was considered just a teen angst filmmaker, and this is the first film that he did that a lot that really uh, was away from that. That wasn't just a teen angst movie. It was a movie for all ages, and it was really unique in that regard, and definitely did a strike a chord with critics. Um, it's a perfect holiday, a holiday film, for, especially for the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, it really does, I think, really does perfectly show showcase what the holiday is all about, about being thankful for, you know, you know, thankful for your family and friends and everything like that. Um, Family is a big important aspect of this movie. It's a perfect movie if you haven't seen it yet, or if you haven't seen it in a long time to watch it with your family on Thanksgiving, because uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. I mean, like what a couple months. So it's definitely a great movie to watch during Thanksgiving. And um, so yeah, I mean, it just this might be a little bit of. A, I'm gonna try to condense my thoughts a little bit more. Um, actually, I'm not gonna even have that long a synopsis actually. Um, pretty much what I'm going to use for the synopsis is the back of the DVD. Um, in this uh, in uh, this film, Steve Martin and John Candy, they star in Plane, Trains, and Automobiles, a classic tale of holiday travel gone awry. Neil Page, played by Steve Martin, is an uptight advertising executive trying to get home to Chicago for Thanksgiving. When his flight is rerouted to Wakita, he reluctantly partners, partners with Del Griffith, played by John Candy, an obnoxious yet lovable salesman of shower, you know, shower curtain rings. 
And to get everything embark on a cross-country adventure that includes various modes of transportation, planes, trains, and automobiles, and, and also uh, buses, and hilarious mishaps, and unforgettable rental car shenanigans. Um, a little bit more of trivia for the film. This is actually Steve Martin's favorite film of his own. And uh, he was convinced to join the production after favoring two scenes that he had read from the script. The seat adjustment scene in the car and the F-word tir tirade at the car rental desk. John Hughes uh, was inspired to write the film's story after an actual flight from New York to Chicago. He was on that was diverted to Wakita, Kansas, thus taking him five days to get home. John Hughes wrote the first draft of the screenplay in three days. His average writing time for a screenplay in those days, in the 80s or, so, or in the eight, late 80s, was about three to five days with 20 or so, 20 or so rewrites. Uh, Neil's house in the film was a set built from scratch, consisting of seven rooms and taking five months to complete. And it ended up costing $100,000, which angered Paramount executives and caused turmoil on the set. Cast and, the cast and crew traveled from the Midwest to the East Coast and back in search of snow for many scenes, which seemed to melt whenever they arrived. The shoot was hellish, and according to some who worked on it, Hughes' grumpy behavior, uh, he was going through some rough times when, the, when he was shooting the movie, only made it worse. And John Hughes' original choice for the train station and the platform was the station in Kanaki, Illinois, which is 60 miles south of Chicago. The cast and crew were in town for a week waiting for weather cold enough to make snow, and several interior scenes were filmed at an abandoned warehouse using a cover set. John Hughes shot over 600,000 feet of film, almost twice the industry average. The rumored three-hour version of the film does, does indeed exist, although not in order. Moreover, it's a mess of footage that would take months, maybe even years, according to Hughes, to transform it into an actual film. It is locked away in a Paramount Paramount vault. Bolt, excuse me, is locked away in a Paramount vault, and according to Hughes, most of it has probably deteriorated by now. No transportation company wanted to appear inept or deficient in any way, so crews had to rent 20 miles of train track and refurbish old railroad cars, construct a set to construct a set that looked like an airline ter terminal and design a rent-a-car company logo and uniforms, and also rent 250 cars for the infamous rent-a-car sequence. In the airport scene in Wakita, when the air airline employee announces that the flight has been canceled, you can see on the board behind him that the destination of the flight is nowhere. This is actually something that I noticed for the first time while I saw it in the theater. And another, and, if, and an answer to a question a lot of people might have about this film, what is in Del Griffith's trunk? Well, the contents of Dell's trunk are a pillow and a picture of his wife. And so, a little bit of trivia there. Um, and now I actually want to share some quotes from the movie, which I'd show the clips, and I, I will probably have some links somewhere up here with some annotations or whatever. You can click on the click, you know, links and so forth. I'm going to share some quotes from the film, uh, select quotes uh, that I really enjoy. They're my, some of my favorite quotes from the movie. And then after that, I'm going to go into the pros and cons of the film, and then I'm going to give my final rating. Anyway, um, so we'll start off with the quotes here. This is uh, this is the first time uh, Dell and and uh, actually not really the first time Dell and Steve Martin meet. Uh, Dell and uh, Neil meet. Uh, they you know they met you know when Dell took Steve Martin's cab in the film, but um, this is the first uh, sort of uh, interaction that they have. And Dell's talking to Steve Martin while they're waiting for their plane. And here's here's the there's the exchange. I know you, don't I? I'm usually very good with names, but I'll be damned if I haven't forgotten yours. You stole my cab. I never stole anything in my life. I hailed a cab on Park Avenue this afternoon, and before I could get in it, you stole it. You're the guy who tried to get my cab. I knew I knew you! You scared the bejesus out of me. Come to think of it, it was easy to get a cab during rush hour. Forget it. I can't forget it. I'm sorry. I, I'm i sorry. I had no idea it was your cab. Let me make it up to you. How about a nice hot dog and a beer? No thanks. Just a hot dog, then. I'm kind of picky about what I eat. Some coffee? No. Milk? No. 
Soda? No. T T? No. Lifesavers? No. <laughs> Slurpee? Sir, please. Just let me know. I'm here. I knew I knew ya. And then uh, here's another one from uh, there. Dell is with Neil on the plane, and he actually ends up in the seat next to next to Neil. So Neil can't seem to get away from this guy. And another thing I wanted to point out in the scene while they're waiting for their plane uh, to board their plane, Dell is reading this book called The Canadian Mountain. <laughs> that was pretty funny. He's reading this. He's, uh, the book that he's reading is called The Canadian Mounted. Definitely a reference to the fact that John Candy is, is Canadian. Now, anyway, so here's a little exchange that they have while they're on the plane. And this is, you know, and Dell is talking to him and so forth. And, you know, Neil's probably is had enough. He wants them to be quiet so he can finish reading an article. Hey, look. I don't want to be rude, but I'm not much of a conversationalist, and I really want to finish this article. A friend of mine wrote it, so don't let me stand in your way. Please don't let me stand in your way. Last thing I want to be remembered as is an annoying blabbermouth. You know, nothing grinds my gears worse than some chowder head that doesn't know when to keep his big trap shut. If you catch me running off of my mouth, just give me a poke in the chubs. And then after, you know, that was pretty fun. There's actually a deleted scene that's on the DVD, which has Dell trying to eat a brownie. Uh, the, the, uh, Neil and Dell are having their uh, dinner on the plane, and uh, some woman unfurls her hair, and it gets stuck in, Del, in Dell's brownie, and he picks through her hair to grab the brownie. It's, 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 it's fine, but it's not something that needed to necessarily be in the movie. Um... This is another fun line of dialogue is when they when they get off, they're they're getting ready to you know the plane. There's some weather issues and Dell Dell's like six bucks on my left right nut says we're not landing in Chicago. It's either right or left. I I, I want to make sure what is which one is it is it right or left because I've seen it quoted as both right and left nut so I don't really I, I don't really which one I I I, I think it's left uh, anyway. After that, and then they land, and then Neil is talking, asking Dell, "What's the flight situation?" There's no way, no way on earth we're gonna get out of here tonight. We'd have more luck playing pickup sticks with our butt cheeks than we will be getting a flight out of here before daybreak. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, but the, by the time the airline cancels this flight, which they will sooner or later, you'd have more of a chance to find a three-legged ballerina than you would a hotel room. Neil's like. Are you saying I could be stuck in Wakita? I'm saying you are stuck in Wakita. <laughs> and then after that, they end up Dell ends up helping Neil, of course, with a room. We you know, they share the room and Dell turns on the massage thing and spills the beer and then and then, you know, he does all these annoying things like he's getting ready to go to sleep and he's cracking his knuckles, break snap at his neck, and break his snap at his neck, clearing his sinuses. And eventually Steve Martin just can't take it anymore, so he gets up and he has this great rant. I love it. And the and John Candy and Steve Martin over there at the top of their game throughout the entire movie. And this is one of my favorite scenes is this one where Steve Martin is just blowing up on Dell. You know, everything is not an antidote. Everything is everything is not an antidote. I, I think it's like antidote. What? How, antidote? Is it? It's not ant antidote. I'm trying to remember exactly that's a damn word that fucking fucks me up. No, everything is not an anecdote. An anecdote. You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are funny or mildly amusing or interesting. You're you're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. And they're not even amusing accidentally. Honey, I'd like you to meet Del Griffith. He's got some amusing antidotes for you. And here's a gun so you can blow your brains out. You'll thank me for it. I could tolerate any insurance seminar. For days, I could sit there and listen to them go on and on with a big smile on my face. And they'd say, how can you stand it? And I'd say, because I've been with Del Griffith. I can take anything. And you know what they'd say? They'd say, I know what you mean. The shower curtain ring guy. Whoa!
It's like going out on a date with a chatty cappy doll. I expect to have a little string on your chest, you know, that I pull out and I have to snap back. Except I wouldn't pull it out and snap it back. You would. Ack! 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 And by the way, you know, when you're telling these little stories, here's a good idea. Have a point! It makes it so much more interesting for the listener. And what makes that scene so great is not only Steve Martin's hilarious rant, but how the entire tone of the scene in just a matter of minutes is flipped on its head when Dell comes back with this really great speech, which I think also really, uh, I think it also really uh, represents John Candy. And it represents everything that John was and was all about. Uh, this very honest, humble comedian uh, who just put himself out there for uh, for all of us. And um, I, just a really great scene. And I mean, I, you have all this hilarious ranting and so forth. But I just love how how the how this scene is flipped on its head with Dell's response to Steve Martin's rant. You want to hurt me? Go right ahead if that makes you feel any better. I'm an easy target. Yeah, you're right. I talk too much. I also listen too much. I can be a cold-hearted cynic like you, but I don't like to hurt people's feelings. Well, you think what you want about me. I'm not changing. I like... I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get. And I just, and then the way that scene is set up, the way it's edited, Candy's performance, which is one of the most underrated aspects of the film for me, is Candy's moment, not only his hilarious comedic performance, but also his dramatic performance, which holds a lot of dramatic weight and is very powerful in its own right. And of course the score the, the, the that's plays in the background here, I believe it's the instrumental version of Power to Believe by Dream Academy, which is a really great piece of music, which is used again in the end credit, not end credits, but I mean the ending, which is really well done. And then even then, you know, after after this happens, Steve Martin, you know, has to realize I kind of got I went a little bit overboard. Let me close this conversation by saying that you are one unique in individual. And Dell comes back as like unique. What's that? What's that? Latin for asshole? <laughs> and then, of course, they end up waking up in the same bed. It's, it's still more hilariousness. And, of course, while they're sleeping, somebody steals their wallet. And they wake up. And then you have this great scene where they wake up and they're sharing the same bed in the motel. And, you know, at the motel. And Neil is like, Del, why did you kiss my ear? Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those are pillows! <laughs> they leap out of bed screaming and shaking their hands. And it's like, ah! And then they go, oh, whoa. Uh, mm, we're big men. All right. Mm. Uh, how about those bears? <laughs> this is hilarious. And then, of course, Steve Martin goes in the bathroom. It's a horror show. Finds Dale's underwear and socks in the sink. And he has to dry himself off out of the shower with a with a washcloth. Uh, anyway, so after that, you know, they end up, uh, they part ways, and then you have, uh, S.C. Martin tries to go out on his own, he tries to rent a car, and then of course, finds out the car's not there, and then this is, this is my favorite scene in the entire movie. It's one of, it's, it's literally, definitely one of the best rants of all time, and I'm going to try to do, do it justice here, where, I love this rant. <clears throat> the car he walks up to the car rental agent who's played by Eddie McClurg and she's all cheerful and whatever she's like welcome to the marathon may I help you and Neil is like yes how may I help you you can start by wiping that fucking dumbass smile off your rosy fucking cheeks and you can give me a fucking automobile a fucking Datsun a fucking Toyota a fucking Mustang, a fucking Buick, four fucking wheels and a seat. I really don't care for the way that you're speaking to me. 
And I really don't care for the way that your company left me in the middle of fucking nowhere with keys with fucking keys to a fucking car that isn't fucking there. And I really didn't care to fucking walk down a fucking highway across a fucking runway to get back here to have you smile on my fucking face. I want a fucking car right fucking now! Then he, you know, the rental agent responds back to that. May I see your rental agreement? I threw it away. Oh boy, oh boy, what? You're fucked. <laughs> this is excellency. There's just no words to describe it. It was classic. And that's the only reason why the film is rated R, is because of that. And that's one of the main reasons why Steve Martin ended up taking the role. I can see why. It's such a great scene. So afterwards, he tries to get a cab. And Neil's just understandably pissed off. And, and, you know, he talks to the cab guy. And he's like, the cab guy's like, where are you going? And Neil's like, Chicago. Chicago? Yeah, Chicago. You know you're in St. Louis. Yes, I do. Why don't you try the airlines? It's faster and you get a free meal. If I wanted to joke, I'd follow you, follow you into the john and watch you take a leak. Now, are you going to help me? Or are you going to stay in there like a slab of meat with mittens? And then the cab dispatcher punches Neil in the face and then uh, uh, a car almost runs him over and then you find out that it's Dell who had his own rental car almost ran over to Steve Martin and the cab dispatcher is giving Dell a hard time now it's like hey get your car out of here and Dell's like yeah just just one sec get it out of here what is your problem you insensitive asshole can't you see we have an injured man down here now I'll move my car, but I want you to help him up. And Neil's like, no! And then he pulls, the cab dispatcher pulls his gloves up. My pleasure. Then he grabs him, Neil, by his testicles. And then on the road drive, you know, with the rental car, with Dell, Dell giving a, Neil a ride in, in the rental car that he picked up. He's giving uh, Neil a hard time. I like this line of dialogue. He's like, I've never seen a guy get picked up by his testicles before. Luckily, lucky for you, that cop passed by when he did, or you'd be lifting your snuts up to tie your shoes. And then they have this bonding moment. You have the hilarious scene where the car seat is messing up. It's like, you broke it. You broke the seat. No, I, I, it was work, working fine when I got out of it. You broke it. <laughs> and, you know, then they have this whole sort of thing where, the, you know, Steve Martin is asking John Candy, like, what is it about, about me? That, you know, you, you got something to say to me? And I love this, this line of dialogue. Okay. Dell's like, okay, all right. I do. You play with your balls a lot. I do not play with my balls. Larry Bird doesn't do as much ball handling in one night as you do in an hour. Are you trying to start a fight? No, I'm simply stating a fact. That's all. You fidget with your nuts a lot. You know what would make me happy? Another couple of balls and an extra set of fingers? <laughs> This is a great line of dialogue. Hilarious. And then, of course, you have the, you're going the wrong way, which is one of my favorite scenes. And, you know, and Neil hallucinates that John Candy is a devil, and I crack up every time. And after that happens, uh, you know, Dell. And I also like the stuff where Dell is singing along to Mess Around by Ray Charles. Everybody's doing the mess around. -na 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 you know, he's messing around. Hey, he's like not even paying attention to the fucking road. He's taking his hands off the steering wheel. It's great. So that's why they ended up going the wrong way in the first place. And then he throws his cig cigarette back to the back seat. And, they, and then it ends up lighting the car on fire. And then they, they, you know, they turn around and they watch the car. And they're it's burning and they're laughing. And then Neil asks uh Dell this question. I like this scene. Is it how could you rent that th how could you rent the thing without a credit card anyway? I mean you could, but how could you? Oh, I gave this gal behind the counter a set of sh shower curtain rings. <laughs> you can't rent a car with shower curtain rings, Dell. Well, your diner's club card wound up in my wallet, and I just You stole it! Not exactly. You stole it! I knew you stole it! 
You stole a card and then you rented a car and you burned it up. I knew you stole it. No, I didn't. I found it in my wallet. I thought maybe you put it there. Why would I put it there? I just love that. I love Steve Martin in this scene. I love Dell's reaction here. Kindness? 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 You stole it! He stole it! No, I didn't. I was going to send you the car back with whatever the rental car charge was, plus interest. But you didn't give me your address. You just ditched me. I had no cards. I had no money. I had nothing. And Nell's like, Neil, Neil not Nell. <laughs> Nell. Neil grabs Nell and is like, give it back. I can't. Why not? Because. Because why? Because when we stop to gas up, I put the card in your wallet. And then Neil's wallet is in the glove department, glove compartment that's in the burning car. And then you know, Adele's like, you're not mad at me, are you? And then Neil just punches him in the stomach. And, you know, of course they make things up and they end up eventually uh, bonding some more over the course of the film. And there's one more quote I want to share. And it is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated uh, quotes from the film is this really great short monologue by John Candy which is the moment where uh, he's sitting in the car outside the hotel because he he didn't have uh, $17 and a nice watch in order to get a room so he's sitting there in the burn up car waiting you know just you know just sitting there reflecting and it's just a great great performance by John Candy here and he's speaking to himself while sitting in the car while it's snowing and just great performance here. I'm going to try to do it the best justice I can here. Well, Marie, once again, my dear, you were right as rain. I am, without a doubt, the biggest pain in the butt that ever came down the pike. I meet someone whose company I really enjoy. And what do I do? I go overboard. I smother the poor, I smother the poor soul. I cause him more trouble than he has a right to. God, I got a big mouth. When am I ever going to wake up? I wish you were here with me right now. But I guess that's not going to happen. Not now, anyway. And that scene really has a lot of impact now. If you've seen the film multiple times, you know uh, that his wife is hasn't been with him she's been dead for eight years and he and as a result he hasn't been home in years either so he's really in need of a family and, and support and now and neil no stop with that neil ends up giving that providing that for him at the end of the movie and it's a really heartwarming uh you know ending and I love the way the ending is set up with the score and the way it's edited and it's a really great way to end the film. And even the ending of the movie that freeze frames on John Candy's smiling face. And that it was bittersweet for me though when I saw that in the theater because I definitely did tear up a little bit because I, 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 you know, John's no longer with us. So uh, both him and John Hughes actually, John Candy and John Hughes are no longer with us. So. May they both rest in peace, uh, but their spirits will always uh, be with us and um, be within their films. And um, John Candy was just such a special comedian. He was such a special, not only comedian, but a special man. He just had this really great ability to make people laugh. And not only that, he just was a great, wonderful person. Uh, everything I've heard about him, he was just a great guy that in some ways, you know, this endearing comedian role that he played wasn't necessarily acting. It really was who he really was. You know, he was the real article. And, you know, he's definitely at his best in this film. Now, um, I really don't want to say about the film, okay, now other than get to the pros and cons here. Uh, pros of plane trains and automobiles, there's numerous numerous pros um john candy steve martin are fantastic um the screenplay is witty and hilarious and i probably forgot some other quotes that are hilarious but you know i can't cover them all um solid soundtrack 
I like the choice of music. I like a lot of the the, the songs in the soundtrack. Power to Believe by Dream Academy is one of my favorite songs from the soundtrack. Um, even you know, uh, you know the rock song. I'll show you something special that was playing in the cab uh, while they're on their way to the hotel, the first hotel, and um, this really really uh, fun soundtrack. Of course, Red River Rock, which I love that you know. It's like every time I'm on a road trip, that music just pops in my head. I love that. I love that bit of music. Red River Rock. Um, great direction by John Hughes. Uh, like I said, great writing by John Hughes as well. Great direction. Um, just a, a great. Uh, I thought it was a really fun premise. I also thought it was really well executed. I thought that it also was a. It had a great balance of uh, comedic weight but also with dramatic weight that really added a lot more to the film so it wasn't just a straight up comedy it had an actual little bit of drama to it that actually worked really well and um so yeah i mean i might have forgotten some more pros but that's pretty much all i can think of about pros i mean like that's pretty much the entire movie is a pro cons not very many, except I, I think that the character of uh, Steve Martin's wife could have been expanded a little bit more. I felt I had a little bit more of a, a bigger picture of Marie, uh, Dell's uh, long gone wife, than I really did with Steve Martin's wife. You saw her, and but she really didn't have a lot to say. The say, and she really didn't have a lot to do except be the worrying wife. And that's one thing I think could have been expanded a little bit. Um, but other than that, I really can't think of any other thing that really stood out to me. Uh, I think it's just a great movie. It's really, really well balanced. It's fast paced. It's like 90 minutes. It's got more than enough laughs. Uh, two great comedians at the top of their game. And it's also got a great heart to it, which, like I said, is something that I think is a bit understated for some people. You know, uh, when they talk about this movie, I think... The heart is one of the reasons why it's such it's so well remembered and so fondly um, loved by so many, and why it stood this test of time because it's, you know that heart that it has is just it's just it's infectious. The 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 comedy you know the laughter is infectious, but so is the heartwarming feeling that the film gives you. And I really don't want to say about the film except. Uh, Rate it out of five stars. I'm going to five out of five. I wouldn't give it anything less than that. And anyway, I really don't want to say, folks, except thanks for watching my review of planes, trains, and automobiles. And I will see you guys later. See ya.